Hey, what's up my little tatter sauce? How y'all doing today? Well, if you are Ashley Darby, baby, you are bigger dum-dum than we ever thought. Y'all, what am I talking about? If you guys don't know, on the, what is it? Um, let me know if you want me to review The Real Housewives of Potomac uh, Reunion, uh, parts two and three. But on part one of The Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion, what? We on this channel have long said and all along predicted when everybody called us a hater and a liar and this and that, that Ashley was a dumb dumb for Michael. Michael was going to leave her with the short end of the stick and she was a fail whatever she was trying to be. Everybody thought it was all cap. Ashley came out her for her mouth and said that she got nothing out of the divorce with Michael. That prenup, the second prenup, the job reduced, not job, but people are like, oh, she signed a pregnant. She getting money, she getting money. To which I said, you realize what she signed was an even worse arrangement than the first one. We're gonna get into that. All she got was a $13,000 mortgage that she cannot afford. And everybody's just like, oh, Ashley fumbled the bag. But let me tell you how much she fumbled the bag because y'all, Michael Darby has been exposed as a neo-colonialist. He is a dog of war. If you don't know what that is, that is someone that um, uh, funds, helps invest, and basically materially benefits from throwing societies into a third world countries in a ca cataclysmic peril and then helping to clean it up. You guys, we need to talk about this because now I see why Ashley wanted to stay married to Michael. Michael is wealthy. Most of his money is overseas. Michael literally, and the funny thing is, Candace called Ashley a bed wench. And the more and more things come out, the more and more it shows that Candace was right. You really were his, you were his bed wench. But here's what I want to say. I'm not about to get into these reports on Michael. You, oh, let me just say it, right? Ashley is an idiot. But also you're an idiot because he literally did have you for his amusement. As long as you could lift one leg up, call on your friend, probably got Cookie Monster on the munch munch for you and Michael every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? You, he, you could stay around. But he gave you nothing. He had you dressing in rainbow clothes. This man who is wealthy, I'm about to show you how much and how much he played Ashley, had his two kids living in bunk beds in a condo. The fact that I tried to tell people, I know y'all know I love a good, I told y'all so. The fact that I tried to tell y'all that you can tell that Michael gives Ashley no access to the money because look at the way she dressed. And some of y'all were like, everybody ain't gotta wear Gucci. Everybody ain't gotta wear Prada. Yeah, and everybody ain't gotta wear Charlotte Russe and Rainbow and Marshall's TJ Maxx value ads. The fact that this money man makes so much money and he was squawking and having to give her mother money which was pennies to him. And now look at Ashley. You in the same place he had you with Sheila. You know, let's get into this. First, let's talk about what exactly um, is the problem with Michael. All right, let's start off with this. In 2011, Michael Darby bought 18% of Bancroft Global Investments. 2011 saw the start of Bancroft's training of African Union Mission to Somalia, A-M-I-S-O-M, -S personnel, particularly the National Defense Forces of Burundi and Uganda. Why is that important? Because it sounds good on paper. However, what Michael's engaged in, most watchdogs refer to, it's just a neo-colonialism. What, now let me explain how you break that down. Again, there's big money involved in this. Huge, huge money. Michael Stock, Stock is Michael Darby's friend and partner in crime as the owner of Bancroft Global Investments, which provides training to those troops. They clearly state their goal is getting in at the bottom of the stock market, AKA creating conflicts so that land is cheap. They are dogs of war. They fund rebels. They form their own mercenaries, militias. They go in and destabilize the whole place so that money, the land will be dirt cheap because nobody wants it in the middle when all the people have fled and there's nothing but a war zone. Nobody wants that land. They get that land and then they send in their mercenaries to go in and fight pacify everybody get the get the land under control and then they start building michael owns heavy heavy land in somalia now when i say that yes that real estate in america please give me a break that's all bs his real money is overseas 
Ashley knew what Michael was into. Ashley knew how powerful Michael was. Ashley knew the people that they rolled in. Ashley is an idiot because let me tell y'all something. You were around billionaires, millionaires, people. You decided to double down and have two kids with Gollum because you wanted his bloodline. You should have been putting on some lipstick and winking at Rupert Murdoch or whoever y'all was hanging out with. Honestly, Michael literally don't got no respect, does what he wants. Why weren't you trying to do a Portia Williams and make moves on Michael's friends? Not even his friends, his business associates. You roll around in rich white circles. We see secession. So apparently that's what happens, right? Got your kids on damn bunk beds and you and Rainbow Finest when you can literally be living Erica Jane's real life. And y'all didn't see, I will just say this once and for all, the fact that y'all were like, not y'all, but y'all know what I'm saying. Everybody ain't gotta have that. Everybody ain't gotta show. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. When you got that much money going into the Louis Vuitton and getting a personal stylist, that ain't nothing. And the fact that all it proved was Ashley does not have access to Michael's money. Let's get into this more of this dog of war and what he's doing. I will say this, right? I will say this. Even that $13,000 a month mortgage that Ashley keeps bragging about, Ashley is a GD fool. Let me tell y'all, I tried to tell you before, but let me just tell y'all um, about this the, the LLC they farm. It's not a 50-50 partnership. LLCs, right? Michael, you know when I think Michael decided to leave Ashley when she got pregnant with that first child? I really do. I think that when she got pregnant with that first child, he was like, I'm leaving you because Michael doesn't want to be a father. He wants to go once a week to a man named B and get on his knees and do the damn thing, right? That's Michael's dream life. And get a girl that's maybe tickling his back while it's happening. That was Ashley's job to tickle his back. She was down for whatever. She finally thought when she got a kid, she could be like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he was like, well, that was your use. Get out of here. But I believe when she had that first kid, he was like, yeah, this isn't for me. I don't want this. I think that he then started to put things into play to, right? Put things into play to actually divorce her. Fine. The second kid came along. Michael said, you know what? Let's just put on. A, I was going to give you this much a month for Dean, maybe being generous. That's enough for two kids. But here's the thing. A third kid, there's no way you can split the child support you were going to pay for one kid into two. A third kid, no, that ups it. You know, Michael had a vasectomy. So Ashley couldn't have any more kids by him. He shut that down. While it was happening, he was doing everything he could to make sure the stuff that Ashley knew about, she could have no access to. That prenup, that post prenup, the second one that she signed, y'all were like, oh, she got the bag. No, because we now find out what I've been saying from the beginning and my sources were right about this. I just want to say, right? That prenup gave her, she agreed to less money, less right. She gave up to stay married to this man. Why were you doing that unless you wasn't trying to literally catch one of his friends? What, well, we all know Ashley's dumb, right? She has daddy issues, she's dumb, she comes from poverty, but also she was so starstruck by the circles that Michael works in and moves in that she didn't want to give that up. Okay, so you have all that. Now in the house, that LLC that she's bragging about, two, three, more, right? She, this idiot went on national TV and admitted that she could not afford the house note without her. Why is that so important? Because when it comes to partnerships, they say what the split is. It's not 50-50 with LLCs. It could be 98-2%. It could be 99-1%. As long as it's not 100%, it's fine. If Michael goes in and says, I put up and I do think that Ashley's dumb enough that she put up money from her own thing. If I put up 85% of the money, then I am the primary investor. Then I own the house, pretty much 85% of it. You own 15, whatever the equity is. However, why is that mortgage so high? I'll tell you why. Because I don't think Michael got a conventional 30-year mortgage. I think Michael got maybe a 15-year mortgage. So that inflates how much you got to pay because you got to pay it back in half the time. Why would he do that? Because even though Ashley is so stupid and she's placating her, placating her with 
like like Candace said, the ornaments, right? He's placating with her with the ornaments. I think Michael's ultimate goal is to say with the divorce, Ashley's so stupid. She always wants to look like Queen Pick Me. I don't need Michael's money. We only want is a house for my kids. And he's like, all right, babe, thanks. You have the house for the kids. You let the divorce go through. As soon as that ink is dry on that divorce, or as soon as Ashley says, Michael, you ain't gonna come here in the middle of the night anymore. No, like we are done, right? And honestly, I think as soon as the divorce is dry, I think this is going to happen, but he's still enjoying seeing what he can get from Ashley because Michael is sick. Michael is sick. I do now know that he is part of this neo-colonialism. I'm gonna get in that to a second. I do think that Michael thought he was slumming it, marrying somebody that had African lineage. That ha I'm just saying, this is what I think. I think that's why he acts like that with Potomac, ada, ada, ada. As soon as that contract's uh, dry, uh, the divorce decree is dry, Michael is then going to say, the LOC owns this house. I put in most of the money. I do not want to pay for that mortgage anymore. She admitted herself she was living out of her means. I want to force sale. I want to dissolve the LLC. What happens when you dissolve the LLC? All assets, you either have to buy your partner out or they must be sold, okay? Ashley already admitted that she's not the one that actually paid for the house. So any of the equity that is even in that house when they decide to sell it, Michael, right? Any of that equity that's in the house when they decide to sell it, Michael is going to get his percentage, which I'm guessing is 85, 99%. You know, Ashley's a dummy, right? That's going to be sold. Ashley's going to be forced out of that house. And whatever money she gets from the proceeds of the sell, if she gets any, she's going to have to use to buy a new house. Michael knows exactly what he is doing because when you dissolve a partnership, there's only two, th I'm sorry, when you dissolve an LLC, there's only two, you either buy your partner out or you just sell it, split assets in the way that it is determined in that contract, in the articles of incorporation, and then go along your merry way. You guys, Michael, yeah. Let's get into these war uh, God of War charges because this is actually really important. Hold on, y'all. Let's get into this. Um, oh, where are we at? Because, y'all, I couldn't believe this when I read it. When I was like, damn, Ashley. So Michael was wealthy and you really did drop the bag even more than we thought. This is directly from, and I Googled it. This is legit. Go ahead and Google it yourself if you want. But I'm just going to give you the overview. This is from Amina. Aya Sinvan on um, Twitter. She said, for those curious enough to interrogate this, right? Michael Darby is a white American real estate developer, most notable for being someone's husband on one of the Real Housewife shows. And is one of the largest landowners in Madagashu, Somali, and earns Madagascar. Madagascar? I think it's Madagascar, sorry. Somalia, and earns a substantial wealth from the war on Somalis. One of the largest, he is a landowner there, one of the largest along with other Amero-Europeans, etc. Yet it's apparently a dangerous ish hole place. It's rarely, right, interrogated as to who funds, trains, or encourages instability there, especially as they've always known there's oil and it's longest strategic and it's the longest strategic coastline in Africa. This is American neo-colonialism, neo 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 war and disaster capitalism in Africa dressed up as anti-terror work. Again, Google it yourselves. Don't argue with me in the comments, okay? Talk about, oh, they're helping, they're pacifying. That is what they do on the surface. There have been many movies made about this. They are strategic. They fund, train, encourage instability, war, violence, petulance, plague in the in that area. And then when everybody flees and it's just like a madman, then they send their own trained mercenaries in who are brutal and disgusting. Google what they do. Their own trained mercenaries in to pacify and restore peace through violence and bloodshed. They make a problem, get it, extraction capitalism, and then they go and solve the problem, right? Um, uh, 
Listen, he owns a share in the private military contractor called Bankrupt Global's investment arm, which gets involved in real estate and other projects that they help pacify the sea. Listen, it is infuriating and depress depressing, but we already know Ashley don't care. And you know what's the funny thing about Ashley's karma? I don't believe that karma is just something that roves around. I believe that it's the natural consequences for your actions and how you live your life. Ashley didn't care. You got down with him by any means. You turned a blind eye to all the ugly things he did. And now look, he's doing, got your kids living in a bunk bed when he owns some of the richest, most oil filled land in the world. He's a fool. Listen, somebody made a dumb uh, statement that said, he's a large landowner, but welcome war on Somalis is hella inflammatory. The company supports the African Union mission there to keep peace. It's not a secret. He's been profiled by major paper. You're giving him way too much credit. Amina clapped back and said, inflammatory? What do you call earning wealth or mercenaries hired by Washington, Ottawa, etc., to clear land of indigenous people and wage war? Also, you're saying that AMISOM is peaceful? The, -I the AMISOM that commits crimes against humanity through structural rape and torture of Somalis, particularly women? Yeah, that's what I thought, right? Again, I don't wanna hear the excuses ready to justify neo-colonialism and imperialism. Michael is a colonist. Ashley was his bed wench, and she wasn't even smart enough to make her exit plan. Y'all, Ashley Darby is a carcinary child, but I do want to say this before I go. And so many people never want to admit this. You know the reason why people look down on big age gap, right? 20 years, maybe, depending on if the person's like over 30. Okay, fine. But when you're looking at 40 year age gaps, do you know why everybody looks down on it? Or looks down on rich old men messing with 20 year olds? Because even though that 20 year old might think they know what's going on, even though a 20 year old might think they're savvy, you are a, not all the time, but most likely you are a victim that old man is running game on you, extracting your youth, extracting your innocence. And a lot of times Michael Darby comes from the air, right? That era where women will be housewives for 50 years living off of their husband's $300,000 salary, living very well middle class, only to find out their husband is worth a couple of hundred million or four or $10 million because they keep their wife, their money is theirs and they keep their wife out of everything. And when they divorce their wife, their wives don't even know what was going on. Michael Darby's generation is a generation that ushered in the rise of divorce attorneys. Did you know that? The lower watchers that go forensic accounting because all they did was hide, hide, lie, scheme, and they were when they were done extracting everything they wanted out of their wives, they kicked them to the curb and just moved on. Michael is a horrible person. He was more than wealthy enough, more than wealthy enough to buy Ashley a $50 million mansion and keep it moving. He was wealthy enough to literally clear everybody out of that penthouse that they shared and buy up the whole floor, knock all the walls and have her living in the garden of Eden. He kept her broke and poor because that's what he thought she deserved. That's what he thought of her. And as much as Ashley loved to side with him, right? The same way he treated every other person on Potomac is the same way he thought about you. The same way he talked about your mama is the same way he talked about you. Now, I'm not saying this to rub this in Ashley's face, but I am saying when people show you who they are, believe them. You were cool with it until he turned on you. Also, if y'all dating a wealthy man and he got you shopping in Charlotte Ruse, you better start putting up a, 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 a profile on Match.com because baby, he ain't taking you seriously. And I don't care how many times he lets you do tickle his back while he's on his knees for his lover. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Um, congratulations that Ashley has divorced that dog of war, Michael Darby. And you know what? I, I don't know. Maybe it's a blessing she ain't getting any of that blood-soaked money. Y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. And I will talk to you later. Bye.